Hey there. The three signs of a miserable job. That's what I'm reading right now. Actually, I've read this already, and uh, this book is by Patrick Lencioni. I've read this a couple of times. I've read it um, in paperback, and I've also got it on my um, audible.com, so on my smartphone, and I listen to it. It's a great book. Um, uh, don't let the title deceive you. It's actually not a negative book at all. It really talks about the important things in work. Now, if you've never read any of Patrick Lencioni books, Lencioni's books, I really do recommend them because they're a really easy read. I love a good story and I'm a big fan of creating stories to help you get through life. Um, I've got a really overactive imagination so I do love Patrick's style. He writes as a fable so the first 90% um, of the book is about the messages that he's trying to convey, but he writes it in a story. So the story is um, about this guy who uh, gets, uh, gets a new job and he discovers that everybody's really miserable in this place. And he tries to figure out how and w well, why first they're all miserable and how he can help them not be miserable in their jobs anymore. So um, Patrick then talks in the back, he's got the actual model at the back. So the first part of it is fable and then he goes into the model at the back. Um, let me just read you this bit because it really does uh, talk about the essence of this book and why he's written it and written it in this way. It would be impossible to accurately measure the amount of misery in the workforce. But my experience tells me this, more people out there are miserable in their jobs then fulfilled by them. And the cost of this, both economic and human terms, is staggering. And economically, productivity suffers greatly when employees are unfulfilled. The effects on a company's bottom line or a nation's economy are undeniable. But it's the social cost of misery at work that seems particularly overwhelming because it has such a broad ripple effect. Now, I suspect that all of you have probably been in a job at one point where you've been absolutely miserable. So what do you do? You go home and you take it out on the family, you take it out on yourself, you might have to have a glass of wine to get through, or you uh, call up a friend and whinge and moan at them. So that's what he's talking about, about the social ripple effect of misery at work. Now, throughout this book, it actually talks about a system for being able to stop yourself from being miserable at work. And he doesn't talk about just leaving, all right? Because that's usually our get out of jail free card, isn't it? So we go, I'm really miserable in the workplace, so I'm going to bang out and I'm going to go get myself a new job and then I'll be all happy and lovely. Um, sometimes it's not as easy as that because sometimes the misery actually falls, follows you from job to job to job because you haven't actually addressed what's really, really going on. And I know I've had that experience myself. I've moved from one job to another job and basically ended up in exactly the same situation going, oh, hello, Michelle, seriously, learn from your mistakes. So this book is all about finding the enjoyment in your work without changing your work so much. It does talk about changing it a little bit and making improvements along the way. Um, one of the key messages in this that I have built into everything that I do and I build it into every single one of my courses is about self-measurement. So it's not just about your company setting KPIs for you and you being able to meet them. He talks really strongly about having your own measurements for success. Now for me, they are much more important than anything that somebody else can set for you. As long as you can measure your own personal success, then you're going to be a lot more satisfied and a lot less miserable in the workplace. Now, the examples that he gives in this, it's in a customer service style role. So um, the example might be smiles on your customers' faces. That could be your measure of success. It's still important to meet the KPIs and make sure that your customer is seated in the right timing and that they get their meal within a certain time and all of those sort of things. Um, but he really talks strongly about having your own measures for success. And that might be the smile that you see on your customer's face because that's what gives you satisfaction and that's what gives you 
the ability to express your own success and your own satisfaction in your work. So Patrick Lencioni, he's got heaps and heaps of books out um, and they're all written in this fable fashion. Um, the other one that's really, really good is the, um, is there's one about teams and I can't remember what it's called now, isn't that terrible? But it's really, oh, here we go, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. That's a really, really great book. If you've got a team and you're wanting to improve them, have a look at that one. That's got some really great messages in it. Um, silos politics and turf wars death by meeting i've read them all they're all amazing um, and they are all read in this uh, written in this fable format which i just love it's my favorite way of reading a leadership book because it's really accessible and really easy and i have a short attention span so i like things that keep my attention so patrick lencioni grab hold have a look you'll be surprised the three signs of a miserable job maybe you're experiencing some of them I hope not but if you are then have a look at this and figure out some ways of being able to solve that so keep reading and stay inspiring